On this week's World of Saltwater Fishing, we're going into the backcountry behind Cudjo in the lower Florida Keys. Andrew Tipler and I will be heading out to the Gulf Wrecks in search of cobia. Well, that's an awesome fight job, this thing. <laughs> uh, and Andrew. Mangrove snapper, barracudas. That's a grown cuda there, man. <laughs> Goliath grouper. Nice one, George. Perfect size right there. And a host of other species. Stay tuned. Oh! Over almost world of saltwater fishing, celebrating 21 years of fishing television excellence. Big fish don't stand a chance. Cudjo in the lower Florida Keys is a relatively quiet place in terms of tourists. And the people who come down here to fish like it that way because the pressure is nowhere near that of the other places. You have the reefs, you have the offshore waters, you have the flats, the channels, and like we are planning on doing in this trip, heading to the Gulf wrecks on the backside of Cudjo. Joining me, longtime friend, Captain Andrew Tipler. You know, we've got quite a few different types of fishing out in the Gulf down here, from the shallower wrecks out to some of the deeper water spots. And when you kind of traverse to the Northwest coming out of the lower Florida Keys, you're gradually sliding out deeper into the wrecks and the deeper water of the Gulf. And the variety of species that you find out there uh, can boggle the mind. And the Gulf is kind of a featureless desert so whenever you have a piece of structure like that that sits in the middle of nothing, it, it in essence turns into an oasis of life. I had the Mark 6 dock in Cudjo on the Atlantic side, met up with Andrew, and the first task was to make sure that we had plenty of chum and plenty of baits to make sure that we had a successful day. Bait is critical. You want to have a, a variety of bait and a lot of it. And that means loading up with live pinfish, Fortunately, all three traps were loaded. We were set to go. Traversing from the Atlantic side into the Gulf side is uh, very scenic. So we shot out through Kemp Channel, uh, ran out through the back country, uh, came out into the Gulf around Sawyer Key, and from there it's uh, you know op open water running all the way out to the wrecks. We had a number of different wrecks that we wanted to explore, and the key is, in a lot of wreck fishing opportunities, is to be the first person on the wreck. So as we started to approach the wreck, Andrew said, let's take that swimming plug. We had a Rapala CD-18. He said, drop this out back, and as we start making circles or passages around this wreck, we might get lucky and score something. First thing here, he threw the Rapala CD-18 out. It didn't take long, it got blasted around the wreck. We have all these rods kind of rigged for different stuff so that you're ready no matter what you come across. So you, you, you stopped us a half a mile from the wreck, made sure we had everything to cover all these different situations ready from crabs to jigs to <laughs> pinfish. Five or six different things ready to throw. Uh, let's see our mystery fish. I'm There's betting it's a cuda. Yeah, yeah, I can tell by the <laughs> silver here. Uh, and it didn't take long. That Rapala CD-18 got crushed and had a great first fight with a real big barracuda. The perfect way to start the morning. Be careful. CD-18s are uh, cheap compared to getting a new hand. Watch that treble in your hand down here. So <laughs> I'm in a bit of a pickle here. Yeah, hang on. If you could hold him. I got... And as we release the Barracuda, it just goes to show you the conservation measures that were placed on this particular species of fish. You're seeing more and more larger Barracuda each season because of this protection. That's a grown Cuda there, man. <laughs> That is a grown cuda. You hey, be the king of the heat. First one to go ahead and feed when we drag this thing by the rack. All right. All Ready right. To go for it, yeah. And they're just a great light tackle fish. And uh, we released this one, sent it back, and, and had fun with it. It's time to get serious, get focused through the anchor, and, and start wreck fishing. George Boat Romo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly being brought to you by Penn. Let the battle begin. Mako. You'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, go boldly. We'll be right back. The wrecks on the Gulf side of the Florida Keys hold a wide variety of game fish. Andrew Tipler and I are trying our luck on one behind Cudjo in the lower Florida Keys. The wrecks out here in this open, shallow, barren Gulf, the restaurants. 
It wasn't any surprise when we marked our particular wreck, it lit up like a Christmas tree. There was life everywhere around it. So the important part is to make sure that we anchor precisely based on what the tide was doing in any light wind. First bait down was a pinfish on a conventional and uh, I dropped that one down. And Andrew hooks up and up comes a beautiful mangrove snapper. He wastes a little time, he wanted to go to get that. Oh, oh, what's a barracuda? Ooh. Not dilly-dallying getting them up. Not at all. Oh, co oh, Cobia, take your time. Yeah, can I help you with anything? I'll get this rod out. He looks like a keeper. Andrew broke the ice on the Cobia, brings it up to the point where we could see it under the surface. Uh, so we were watching for another fish coming up, and instead of another Cobia, oh, Goliath after him. It was a giant Goliath grouper that came up trying to take my Cobia from me. What was, it, what was after him? A giant <laughs> Goliath was trying to eat him. Really? I didn't even see the Goliath yeah. down there, huh? I heard you talk about shark, but it wasn't a shark, it was a Goliath, huh? Yeah. And we both a legal sized cobia and a beauty at that. Shape it up to be a really good trip. Oh, that was an awesome fight job. This thing <laughs> gave well, you a run came for up, it. It came up easy at first. I think he was running from something. Yeah. And then once so uh, we managed to keep it away from the, the Goliath grouper, uh, and our first cobia was in the boat. So as is typical when George and I are out there, we end up with a whole lot more rods out than we do people on the boat. And uh, George hooks up. Where we go? Uh-oh. 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 Uh so it came up behind uh -oh. the boat, and all of a sudden there was a huge explosion. Big bull shark was trying to eat it. Oh, big Kobe oh, and big oh, shark! Big shark got my Kobe. Look at this thing. Here's yeah. my Kobe. I still hey, got him. He's right here. He's right here. Coming under. Coming around. Right here, Andrew. Oh, I'm looking the rod. Everything's going haywire. Come on, buddy. Right down. Oh! <laughs> I'm laughing too hard to net you for <laughs> Oh, all right. We got a oh, mess you, going on, man. Did you see Jaws? <laughs> and this bull shark was a monster. It just startled us. How the cobia got away from the shark is beyond me. Here I am throwing 10 different rods out on this side. Let's measure him up. And the cobia was just shy of being legal. We had to let it go and uh, definitely had enough energy to swim. And I certainly hope it made it back down to the wreck or at least stayed away from that shark. Short guy, hope you make it back. He's got a long road to get back down without getting eaten. All right, go for it, buddy. George Bocarolo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly being brought to you by Simrad, the new Simrad NSS Evo 3S chart plotter. The best just got better. Rapala Coastal, another great day. Suffix, always use the best line. Starbright Boat Care Products, blending technology and performance since 1973. We'll be right back. In the Lower Keys, boating is a major part of our lifestyle down here. Fishing uh, is one of the you know, top activities, but just being able to get out into the backcountry and access some of the pretty areas, kayaking, sandbar picnics, but being on the water is one of the most important things. Now we're here in Cudjo, so it gives you kind of good access to uh, all the amenities that Key West has to offer. You have Lou Key, with a lot of uh, major dives take place. You could snorkel or scuba dive with uh, a thriving reef system. As far as eco tours and uh, kayaking, which is just growing in leaps and bounds, you look at the channels here, Kemp Channel, you have Pine Channel, these passageways that lead from the Atlantic to the Gulf and all the islands and the grasses and the flats and these little creeks and channels around here. It, it's just a watery place that satisfies all interests from angling to diving to kayaking. It's uh, just a great place to come out and uh, you know get in one with nature. Once again, we stayed at Palmer's Resort on Little Torch Key. It's angler friendly. They have an area right across the street that you could keep your trailer, and there's a boat ramp close by. So it makes life easy if you're pulling your own boat in here. It's just very comfortable, and it's like an old style Florida property. It's fishing oriented, diving oriented, and the people are absolutely very friendly. Palmers is situated on Pine Channel, giving you the option of heading into the Gulf or crossing over and going into the Atlantic. So you're right there in the middle. And if you like to fish the flats and the channels, there's some excellent fishing right behind Palmers. So all in all, when you're heading down to the Florida Keys, specifically lower Florida Keys, check out Palmers Resort. It's a regular stay of ours, and I can't recommend this place any higher. 
this could be an error in judgment. How do you, oh, you know, you blame me for getting you on those crazy catches, but you're the one who always instigates it. it. I can't help it. So after a while, uh, we've been fishing and I, I decided it was time to pull out that big rod. It's on the camera. This is you instigating this deal. And I was gonna do my best to get George stuck with something that was gonna give him a hard time. And That's 80 braid, mm -hmm. 110 liter, triple X circle, capable of providing a lot of torture and punishment. You know, I gotta clean my glasses. Can you hold this No, I'm not touching that. <laughs> we set out a bait, we put the rod in the, uh, the bow rod holder, Andrew now all of a sudden hooks up with a barracuda. That is a stud cuda. God, that guy's big. I guess you weren't happy with me letting the small ones go, huh, for you? I've found out that George always likes to stand with me between the big rod and him. So wherever we put that rod, I'm gonna find him on the other side of me. And while I'm fighting that fish, all of a sudden the big rod starts screaming. Oh, gee, you did this to me intentionally. Yes. You did yes. this to me intentionally. I hate you. And I look over, I am so excited because I think George is getting it this time. And he uh, he manages to grab the rod out of the gunnel. Oh, oh, that has made my day, George. Oh. And loads up and now we've got a double on. I've got a cuda and he's got something. He found a piece of structure. Oh. Hmm. Now I got him out. Oh, you got off easy. Oh, well, look, oh my big God. Gonna eat him. Dude, that almost ate that one. He, what, where's your cuda? Okay, hang on. Did you see the size of the one that came up trying yep, to eat him? I did. All right, let's take care of your monster first, your sea monster. You got off easy, oh. man. You got off easy. Look at the size and girth of that. Oh. I'm going to send this guy on his way, and then I'll help you while I'm down here. There you go. You see that broken line? Somebody yeah, else had somebody him there else, as well. Two other people have had run-ins with him. Hook is yeah, clear. I got the hook. How about the other lines? Could get the hooks out, clean them up a little bit, or what? There's one I see protruding. One. Good. A couple, yeah. There's, you got one more left. Let's see how deep that is. Oh, that's right at the top, too. Hey, a little teeth cleaning. So going to the uh, dentist. And All right, I'm going to get this guy back in here. Go for it. Now you, can, right. now you can rebate. You wanted that big one on the, with me. I know you did. I know. But, well, you know, that's what happened last time. I got the bull shark. You had the nurse shark. Yes. So uh, after George released the Goliath, um, we decided to put the big rod back down there again, which means that no matter what, if it gets bit, it's my turn. And uh, I go back to fishing some other lines, and I look over and I see the rod tip jump. The line was tearing off for the horizon, and uh, we've got the heavy outfit with the drag lock down, and I knew that this had been a mistake right out of the gate. I had been stuck with the big bull shark again. Can I get that cushion? Yes. Coming your way. I'm going back there with another popcorn and watch the show. And you could tell after the first 20 seconds it was not a Goliath because this started just going in a straight line and going towards the horizon. What do you think? Sea trout? Redfish? Uh, I think it's a grunt. Now, it wouldn't be a trip with you unless you hooked a bull shark. And this shark just kept going, 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 and going. I could see Andrew, you breaking out, perspiring already. And here you are in that hot July sun, and he's on this big bull shark. You know, people love to come out, hook the live scoopers, those big sharks. It's so much better when you watch somebody do the fight than you actually doing yeah. the fighting. Well, I like to give people a hard time while they're doing this. Now I'm stuck with it. I'm just watching. <laughs> and uh, we, we go through, uh, about every fish fighting technique in the books for this, this shark. So first started out with the traditional stand-up technique and after a while with that um, I was about done. So the second technique we employed was the uh, beach fishing technique. Fortunately George's boat is long enough that I could take a walk from uh, the stern to the bow and then walk back down taking up the line as I went uh, and gave that a, 
a go for a little bit. Oh, this is where it's gonna start getting painful. And then down towards the end of the fight, and that's where we uh, decided to deploy the, uh, the West Coast Rail Rod technique. There you go, bring up that leader. Look at this, look at the size of this thing. Yeah, just out of range. Okay, so I have to turn them free, be careful. Check this, that's what you wanted. I wanted you to get that. Uh, I know you did. We finally had the fish up, George grabbed the leader, and we had uh, 400 pound cable that, uh, that we caught this fish on. Right, let's go ahead and get this guy for a release. How are you gonna do that? And uh, the shark had been chewing on the cable so much through the fight that all it took was a, a little pull and, and the rest of the cable parted ways and off the shark went. Here he goes. Total mass. If you had to guess the weight of that shark, what would you say hit thing came in? I have no idea. At? Me either. All right, no got him did, on that did leader. Did he go through that? Yes, he did. 400 pound there. Look at that. But like you said, feel the whole length of it. How frayed is it? I think it's time for you to catch something. <laughs> I'm gonna lay down in the front. <laughs> <laughs> George's tackle locker. Brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. Identifying specific species requires the knowledge of those associated within a local environment and a quality sonar and transducer. My Simrad Evo 3 units, for example, utilize dual frequency chirp enhanced transducers. Chirp ducers broadcast three independent sonar signals versus a single signal from standard transducers. This results in greater target separation, meaning the bottom and fish appear in much greater detail. In this Gulf of Mexico wreck image, for example, the masses of fish tied to the structure are primarily mangrove snapper, whereas the large elongated boomerang to the left is a bull shark. The two compact marks above the bull shark are likely cobia as they commonly hang together around wrecks. We caught all these species on this particular structure. When mutton snappers spawn, they often stack in a Christmas tree-like fashion, as is evident in the screenshot of a Gulf of Mexico rock pile. And to lend an idea of how solidly mangrove snapper gather for spawning, this screenshot identified them as a false bottom at 28.5 feet. We were actually in 60 feet of water, and yes, we limited out in fast order. A quality sonar also shows big fish being played up through the water column. One of our anglers, tiring a bit, was looking for words of encouragement on a fish he hooked 400 feet down. I glanced at my Simrad and told her the fish was only 50 feet beneath the boat and to keep cranking. In reality, it was around a 200 foot mark. She did prevail, landing in an impressive 30 pound Amoco Jack. Mercury Performance Stats, Cujo, Florida Keys. Seas, calm. Power, triple Mercury Verano 400 horsepower outboards. Speed, 45 to 48 miles per hour. Total fuel burned, 63 gallons. George Boat for Almost World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly being brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum. Order yours today at papaspilar.com. Float On, the original aluminum immersible boat trailer. King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. On the way back in from a successful day of wreck fishing in the Gulf behind Cudjo in the lower Florida Keys, Andrew Tipler convinced me to stop at just one more spot. So after a whole lot of arm twisting, um, George agreed to take a turn with the big rod. So on the way in, he stops by this spot, and he said, it's loaded up with Goliaths. He said, there's some monsters in here, so I'm going to watch you struggle. So we, uh, we stopped on a shallow rack on the way home um, that uh, typically has a lot of, a lot of nice-sized Goliaths on it. You don't have to like feed him, just don't, yeah. don't get on him immediately. There you go. Ooh, that was a hit that there. Was Engaged the drag, and I hooked up to a glath grouper and was trying desperately to find a piece of that wreck to get me on. This is a sport where you hope for the little ones, you know? Nice work getting away from the wreck. I guess I could get gloves on and get ready to help you instead of just sitting here watching. What size category are you betting? Ah, uh, we're gonna find out. They all feel big. Here he is. Here's the big guy. Nice one, George. Perfect uh, size. I, I right think there. I owed that one to you to, to actually get the five <laughs> one of these. I've been trying to stick you with something yes, you like have. that. You know what I mean? All right, let's see about sending this guy on his way. All right, hang on, I think I'll help you. 
And here comes about a 50 pound Goliath group alongside the boat. We release it and Andrew said, you still have the luck of the draw. He said, I was hoping you to get about a 250 pound Goliath. Had a fun day, we turned the boat around and charged back into Kudjo Key. It was a very successful outing. And uh, we had a lot of fun, laughed a lot, uh, gave each other a hard time quite a bit through this trip. And each time George and I have fished together, it's just become more and more fun fishing with a good friend. We had plenty of good eats, mangrove snapper and Kobe in the box. It was yet another great trip with a good friend and uh, can't wait to do this one all over again with them down in the future. It's uh, just a fun time being with them. If you'd like to keep up with our fishing adventures, please follow me on Instagram. I'm at George Poveromo. On Facebook, I'm at facebook.com forward slash george.poveromo. And you can view our episodes at any time on our YouTube channel, George Poveromo TV. We'll see you out on the water.